I had a request from a couple of my good subscribers to elaborate a little bit on what they've seen in some of my TV videos where I return refer to a, um, an item called the Blonder Tongue Modulator where I am watching TV signals over the air. So I thought I would do a quick video. For those of you that may not be familiar with what a Blonder Tongue Modulator is, um, it's basically the same concept as if you watch some of the old radio guys, they'll they'll be working on their radios and, and tell you that they're, they're they have an AM transmitter in their house and they're transmitting their own music or programming or whatever it is that they they want to listen to so that they can pick up the signal in their house um, and listen to their own music and it's commercial free and it's probably a lot better programming well it is better programming it's what they want um, versus what's on AM today as you guys know in most areas AM radio is is not very good it's usually either talk radio or um, well for instance in my area there's there's one or two country stations there's a gospel station and then there's sports talk and then political political talk which is probably the best signal that's out there so if you're restoring your 20s, 30s, 40s radios, you know, you you can you can pick that up over the air now, uh, but it may not be what you want to listen to. So as TV guys, we have an even bigger problem. Um, our VHF and UH, UHF signals are long gone. It's all digital now. And uh, unless you have a really good setup for receiving digital signals um, as, a, as, as in a good antenna, that's very difficult to accomplish. And in most locations, there's not that many stations. And then the third and probably biggest part is um, our old vintage TV sets weren't designed to process digital signals, so it, it, it can cause some problems. So what a lot of TV guys have is, is these blonder tongue laboratories um, modulators. And the one that I'm showing you here is the one that I'm currently using. And it simply broadcasts VHF on channel 3. Now, Blonder Tongue is an older company. Uh, you can see here, um, I believe the company started, it's Blonder Tongue Laboratories. I, I think it's located in New, the state of New York or New Jersey one. I can't remember. And back in the 50s, they manufactured, you know, UHF converters, um, back when UHF first came on board and, and you had a VHF TV and um, you, you didn't have the UHF option built into your TV, you could buy this unit right here and hook it up. And um, I think it's supposed to have one tube in there. There's not a tube in this one. But you could, you could use this unit to uh, pick up UHF without having to modify your TV or buy a new TV that had UHF installed. So it's it's a company that's been involved in uh, producing signals and whatnot. They're still in business today. Um, unfortunately, they're like every everybody else in the electronics industry. Most of their most of their equipment is manufactured in China now. And uh, as opposed to some of this older stuff that was made right here in the United States. What these are originally used for is if, like in a hotel, uh, you can see this is designed to, to go into a bank. So imagine that you have a hotel and you have multiple levels in your hotel and rooms. You can use uh, blonder tongue equipment to rebroadcast signals that you're picking up maybe from a local cable company or whatnot and you can you can broadcast it throughout uh, the hotel depending on what your needs are so a lot a lot of their products are designed for commercial application but a lot of us TV guys as you guys know now use these to just simply um, have an, a, a way to watch some of our older TVs um, and watch programming on them because there's there's no way to 
plug an external antenna into some of these micro TVs that I showed you in a video recently. And uh, so how this basically works is this, what I've got here is a VCR DVD combo and the output of the VCR, just like any other normal cable output, goes into the input part right there. Okay, and then what we have for a broadcast antenna is very simply a radio set of Radio Shack rabbit ears. I think these were the $8 pair. It's the cheap pair, cheapest pair they had in there. You can use those or you could use vintage antennas. I've got some of those, like one of those over there. You could use that. I just prefer to save those for my television sets. And um, this is basically taking uh, the place of the big red and white towers that our um, TV stations broadcast from. So with this setup, I can broadcast pretty much throughout my house. Okay guys, just to illustrate how uh, this transmitter can work, um, <clears throat> my house is about 3,800 square feet. It's a five bedroom house and I have the transmitter located down in the basement and I'm up on the upstairs floor right outside the master bedroom, which is probably about the farthest point away from the transmitter. And I hopefully I can do this one handed, but can illustrate how well this works, or it can work. Um, well, I'm in between TV shows being broadcast right now, but you can see there's some snow, and uh, the f sounds a little staticky. But there's an example. Um, it, it'll pretty much transmit in any room in my house. Um, I can go outside in the driveway and walk out about 20 yards and still get signal and then after that it's it's pretty dicey, but um, It'll work. It'll work pretty well Anywhere I go in the house um, and if I were to move the modulator or the transmitter to the uh, Main main floor instead of having it down in the basement. I think I'd probably get better results all throughout the house, but um, Unfortunately, my wife, um, that's not in her decorating plan, so uh, my um, blonder tongue is designated down in the shop. Okay, I'm back down in the shop, and I uh, just wanted to give you a little closer look at one of my other blonder tongue models and just show you um, a little bit about some of the controls that are on these. Uh, when it is powered on, there is a red light here that will tell you that uh, the video signal is actually is live and going. There's an, um, an adjustment level. This is a power adjustment level. Or actually, no, I'm not, I'm, I can't quite remember what this, this may be the um, video level. There's also an output level that you can adjust and I can't quite remember what the difference is between this video level and then this particular model has um, the ability to, to do audio um, but this is what the inside of one of these units looks like there's the um, I think this is the this is the input processing here and then this is um, the output processing, um, which where your your antenna, your rabbit ears would connect here, and your input source would connect here. Okay, and uh, one thing about these units is there's no on and off switch. Okay, so when you have it when you have it plugged in, they're on all the time. So one thing about these units is um, the electrolytics especially from this time period these electrolytics can have a tendency to go bad i think my units were probably built in the 80s and used during the 80s and 
and they were designed to run 24 7 and that's exactly what they did so one thing that can happen is is when your electrolytics go bad and you can see here hopefully you'll be able to see this you see those horizontal bars or hum bars as they're called if you look closely and I think this is coming through on the camera you can see those those lines okay that's not interference from uh, the transmission that certainly can happen to you with these um, I've noticed that when the microwave is running that you can get some interference there's certain things that can cause interference but um, that's a sign of bad electrolytic caps in here so um, I am going to uh, in the very near future change all the electrolytics in my unit and see if that has um, can get those humbars out of there um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film that for you I think that would be pretty boring I know there's maybe three or four electrolytics in here and uh, probably sometime in the next week I'm gonna break that open and uh, get those electrolytics changed and see if I can get rid of those humbars but otherwise these little these little units will perform very well for you they're available on eBay um, this is another one of my micro TVs it's kind of a LCD type set and it's harder to detect those humbars in this set but um, I noticed on my CRT sets, I, I'm getting those bars, so definitely need to try to change those electrolytics out. But as I was saying, these things are available on eBay. Uh, there's several different models. Um, these smaller ones like I have here are just designed for one channel. I do have a, a bigger one here. It's not operative right now, but it has the ability for you to set many channels okay including uh, cable and what you do is manipulate these switches there's a chart that comes with it and whether these are up or down will indicate you know what channel you're broadcasting on and this one's a little bit more complex and of course it's a little bit bigger but it's still the same principle and uh, you know, like I said, these can be anywhere from, I've seen people ask $150 for them, and anywhere from 40 to 150 bucks. I would say that if you bought one of these for 150 bucks, they better guarantee that it's tested and working correctly. Uh, because most of all these units that are out there for sale um, are just being liquidated by someone who's come in and changed the rack system in a hotel or whatever. And this and these um, these units are pretty much just out of date, and they're putting in new stuff to deal with high definition TV and uh, satellite and all kinds of different things, as well as uh, Wi-Fi and all the other things that they have to have in hotels these days. But they're out there. I think you know you could probably buy one of these, you know, twenty, thirty bucks. I think that's what I paid for. My channel 3 and my channel 7 not very expensive at all so um, they're out there all you have to do is do an eBay search for blonder tongue and uh, any given time there's probably a hundred of them for sale so if you're interested in using your old TVs the way they were meant to be used um, I'd recommend that like you this one and uh, you know you can just set it in in a corner somewhere Get a cheap antenna, and um, as long as you got the programming, you know, I have uh, Hogan's Heroes, Gilligan's Island, I have old movies. I mean, anything you, you can watch, you want to watch on a DVD, or if you still got some of the old VHS stuff, you can, you can broadcast it and, and watch it on your vintage TVs. Okay? 
So I hope that helped explain. And then further on down the line, as I do more TV repairs and after I've changed the electrolytics, I'll make mention of that in one of my videos to see if that actually, in fact, corrected that humbar problem that I was talking about. Okay, guys, if you have any questions just uh, that I didn't address, put them, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.